Hi everyone. Um, it's been probably about a year since I did a video and what I'm doing has changed quite a lot but I thought I would talk to you for a couple of minutes while I do it. Um, so at the moment I'm doing a project about kintsugi which is a Japanese um, traditional practice of mending ceramics with um, urushi laka and urushi is um, from the it's the the tree it comes from is the Japanese sumac tree um, or the urushi tree and this is some urushi here and um, it's related to poison ivy and poison oak but it's um, the the allergen within it the allergic compound within it is stronger um, so it's quite um, potent stuff and I need to make sure that my cat is not exposed to it so I've got this little pot here that was not particularly expensive and I've been practicing um, how to put things back together by taking things from the recycling or inexpensive ceramics that I had um, breaking them and reassembling them so in order to reassemble this piece it's going to take a few months um, and the first stage of the process is what I'm going to do now which is to take pure nama urushi fresh lacquer from the Japanese sumac tree and to carefully paint it along all of the raw edges that I plan to bond back together and then um, I need to bake it for two hours um, so I've prepared a couple of other pieces but I'm just going to show you this one and talk a little bit about what kintsugi is and what I'm doing as I do that I think I'd do a lot more um, creative streams if I were able to go live while I did it and not worry about editing and all of that stuff because it really does take a long time so I've been in quarantine in Japan for about a hundred days in Tokyo and work has just started back up this week um, so there's a lot there's a lot going on emotionally at the moment here for everybody and around the world so it's quite nice to do something that is um, a slow process and a meditative mindful kind of process that requires me to be fairly meticulous I'm sure I'm not as meticulous as a proper artisan would be um, but I'm learning, which is why I'm using cheap ceramics and I'm not doing any mending for anybody else. Um, all of the plastic you can see in the glass is to do with the trying to contain the allergic component within the urushi because it will give you like a reaction with blisters and it's, um, <clears throat> it's very unpleasant. So I need to try it and protect myself from that it's very warm here and I wish I didn't have to wear long sleeves <laughs> this room doesn't have any fan or AC so it's very humid but the humidity helps the lacquer the urushi lacquer um, cure so I've actually got like a, a plastic tote I had with some uh, bowl of water in it and the pieces that are curing at the moment that I've already started to mend um, and the curing in there it takes about um, it takes about two to three weeks to do the cure for the initial mend so this process has got um, multiple stages um, kin means gold and tsugiru or tsugu um, means to join 
um, Tsuku, I think it is. Um, so Kintsugi is the um, the art of repairing ceramics, and occasionally you see other objects like glass um, using this lacquer, which is a biopolymer, and then the top layer is covered with gold powder, silver powder, brass, platinum. It's usually um, a, a precious metal powder or a metal powder. So I'll be using brass because it's cheap, easily available, and um, it still looks beautiful. This process has been around for a couple of hundred years, I think. Longer than that, maybe. A few hundred years. It's quite old, an old process. Predating, certainly predating plastics or five-minute epoxy or any of the other things you see people using on YouTube. Um, I think inherent in the process of Kintsugi, it's very linked to the philosophy of wabi-sabi and finding beauty in imperfections of um, you know not hiding a mistake or a, a, a perceived error beauty in the in the unique nature of things and in the story of an object which is obviously if an object has been broken um, that's part of its history so showing that and sort of celebrating that, honouring it and displaying that with these sort of beautiful thin metal veins running through a piece is, um, yeah, it's really, it's like a really kind of beautiful philosophy. And I think uh, a lot of people find it an interesting, not only beautiful aesthetically, but also an interesting kind of metaphor for trauma or damage of some kind and repair or recovery. So what I'm doing now is you paint the lacquer, the raw um, lacquer, the nama urushi, onto the raw edge of the ceramic and then you dab it off with a tissue until almost none comes off anymore. Then you bake it for a couple of hours at a, sort of about 120 degrees. And <clears throat> after that, it, it kind of seals the edge. The next stage of the process is done once it's cooled down. So I'll probably do it tomorrow. Um, will be to make mugi urushi and you use flour um, sort of typical household flour and mix it in equal parts oh you mix flour with some water and you create almost like a a dough a very stretchy dough you mix it and mix it and mix it until it's really quite gummy and stretchy and then you mix in urushi, lacquer, that's supposed to be about an equal proportion to the amount of flour you put into it. And you make mugi urushi. I actually have some mugi urushi here, because um, I made too much last time, so I'm going to try and use that on a piece, maybe. Um, and that's very, very sticky. It's got a sort of chewed, used chewing gum consistency. And you can bond the pieces together with that. You usually use um, washi tape, masking tape, um, low tack painter's tape kind of thing to um, put the pieces back together. And then you use the pieces unweight um, to help the joint set. So for example, these two pieces go together like this. And 
so I would maybe balance them like this or like this so that the weight of the top half of the ceramic was on the join helping to bond them together actually before I did this um, coating process you have to check the edges of the ceramic quite carefully and you can see that the crack is quite visible and that's because I smoothed out the edge to make sure there was no glaze there which helps the ceramic to bond to the lacquer better and after after you've bonded the pieces together with the chewing gum like mugi urushi um, which just means well mugi is barley i think um but anyway it means um flour and lacquer after you've bonded the pieces together with that mixture they need to go into a uh, some kind of area with humid conditions so i'm using a plastic tote bin that i had with a glass of water in it and a humidity monitor and temperature monitor and they should be between 17 to 90 percent humidity because the humidity helps the lacquer cure it's not drying like paint would dry um, it's curing the way that a resin or a plastic would cure because it's a biopolymer and um, you put the pieces together bonded together so you might have I might uh, put these pieces together like this with a little bit of tape there and I might choose to also put this one in but I'm unlikely to do the whole thing in one go and once it's got that bond in it you have to put it in the muro which is the humidity controlled temperature controlled environment you have to put it in there for two to three weeks to cure then you can scrape back any excess um, mugi urushi protruding from the joint it will have cured and it should be hard and the bond should be solid by that stage so there's a, a very sort of slow layered process of scraping back and then you put another layer on and then you scrape it back and you make sure that it's all flush with the original ceramic and then finally you use different grades of lacquer you use a higher quality lacquer and quite often it's red and it's not naturally red i think it's got iron oxide or something in it and um anyway i think it's it's got a finer smoother texture than than um, this lacquer i'm not exactly sure and you you paint that on very very carefully in a thin line and then you sprinkle it with really fine metal powder gold platinum whatever and um but because if i join these two pieces and then let that joint cure for three weeks and then join the next piece and then let that cure for three weeks and then join the final piece and let that cure for three weeks and then I've got a chip here and here that I need to fill in which I would use a different process for also using urushi that would also take several weeks to cure you can see how one object even with simple fractures can take months to fix so um, I'm trying to set up a rotation of practice objects so that I've got something to work on um, every few days something comes up and I put the first few objects in uh, around two and a half three weeks ago so they're starting to get to the point where they might be cured and um, I think you'll see as if I keep doing these videos you'll see that um, those ones are not as good looking as these ones but I'm trying to make it so that I can rather than doing one thing waiting three weeks doing the next bit and waiting three weeks I want to sort of have multiple things in rotation anyway I guess that's enough for today um, I'm going to clean up now you clean up using um, alcohol and oil so I'm going to clean up and um, yeah, I'll add to this video or upload another one when I do the next stage. Thanks for watching. Bye.